Hello, welcome to Fireside Chats. My name is Magla Pele, and I bid you a very, very warm welcome to today's show. I have in the studio with me Sister Denise, who has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over 40 years. The topic of today's show is called A Spiritual Angle on Current Affairs. This topic we found to be relevant because of what is transpiring in the world today. We ask you in this series to take a deep look into your heart and to look at the subject of the core of spirituality. Does spirituality mean anything to you? Does it have any bearing? Um, what is your relationship with God? Do you enjoy a balanced relationship with God? Does your understanding of life have any impact on your consciousness? Do you feel that you are um, harming yourself in any way? Are you a danger to yourself? Are you a danger to others? These are the many questions that we hope to be answering during the course of today's show as well as in the shows to come. Sister Denise is here to share with us her wisdom and insight into the subject. Sister Denise, thank you very much for joining us and a very, very warm welcome. Thank you. Always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Likewise. Uh, please tell me, um, the, one needs to go no further than the newspaper or the television channel on any given day to be shocked, appalled and or disgusted at what one sees on television. It seems la like mankind is continually reaching a new low. Um, how do you, with your spiritual understanding, um, maintain equanimity in the face of what one sees um, as far as the bombardment of the media is concerned? You know, in um, <clears throat> the way people normally look at this is in the context of the idea of evolution the idea of humanity progressing towards something very harmonious and uh, with human rights and um, where people have quality lifestyle, where everything is moving to a better and better world. But uh, when we see these things on TV, about wars, about illnesses, about corruption, about the way people treat each other, most people say, what's going on? In fact, nowadays, I start hearing from people, uh, they say, I think the world is destroying itself, civilization seems to be collapsing, we don't understand what's going on and why it's like this, because it's supposed to be going in the opposite direction. Now, if we look at it from the angle of Raj Yoga, as described in the teachings of the Brahma Kumaris, one of the things that we look at is the idea that maybe we're not evolving. Maybe things are um, moving towards a state of um, loss of power in so many different levels, not less current affairs. And why is this so? What does it mean? So the spiritual angle will say, well, uh, one of the things we know is that things will be going to an extreme. And maybe they have reached an extreme and then they go the opposite way. So when we see all of these things, uh, we don't say, why is it like this? But rather we say something like, well, we were told that things are going to go in this direction to a certain extreme point before everything starts going the other way. And I think because of this idea that there is an extreme point after which things go the other way, there isn't so much of a feeling of confusion or wonderment that why is it happening. And then the other thing that we see is that the world is like an enormous play or an enormous 3D film 
and all of the people are the actors in the film. And at this particular point in the film is characterized by this very, very negative um, behavior globally uh, and, and that, um, that it will pass. And the other thing I think that is very helpful to feel, because you have empathy, you have sympathy with people who are going through very extreme conditions, you know, and then a normal person will see, okay, they suffer enormously and then they die ignominiously and then that doesn't have any meaning. Whereas I think from a spiritual angle, we see, well, maybe it isn't without meaning. You know, maybe uh, these characters who are playing out these scenes, their spirits, their souls, they will reincarnate. Uh, they will forget those horrific experiences. And even it is also said that when a person goes through suffering, any kind of suffering, um, it, it, has, it, it has a cleansing factor and the soul is cleansed of negativity that came into it and, and the soul gets rejuvenated, renewed and it really is that the world is going through this kind of purging process uh, before a, a new springtime, a new dawn. So we're really at the dark night of civilization. But, you know, the world, the earth, has much more power than the environmentalists realize to regenerate itself. Because we see that somehow humanity is in a frenzy of destroying the earth, destroying each other, destroying the self, uh, the civilizations are destroying themselves, the religions are destroying themselves, people don't see now where is it going. Whereas from a spiritual angle we see, okay, it's going to an extreme, but it will regenerate itself. So it makes us feel a certain amount of optimism, a certain feeling that, yeah, no, we will survive this, we will get through this, and everything will uh, regenerate itself. So it, it gives us a much less hopeless feeling in comparison with what many people are feeling right now. Okay. So, Sister Denise, apart from the, um, the shock and horror that um, we experience when reading the news, uh, there's also a feeling of, um, well, even after the incident has passed, there's this feeling of fear that's left behind. Well, it happened to me as well. There's a fear of is how badly is this going to spread. There's the fear of um, of hating certain sectors of the world because of the association with such. There is um, uh, well disheartenment. Okay, uh, how does one manage each and every one of those um, those feelings? What do you what do you do with that? Because this it's a natural reaction to something to an atrocity. It's a natural reaction. Yeah, and it, it it's something that if you're not careful, it can be so destructive of the mm. person who witnesses it. You see, yes, let alone who is undergoing. Yes. all of these horrors, you see. So if we say, okay, I'm not undergoing any horrors right now, I'm very fortunate, but uh, how do I process this? Mm. It's, uh, it's uh, primary trauma is the actual victim, then secondary trauma is the witnesses, third tertiary trauma is the uh, people related to the witnesses. So, the, so it's as if it's like a disease that's spreading, yes. like that, yeah? So and I think what the spiritual angle uh, gives us is this idea or this practice of being a, a witness, a um, detached observer, uh, one who is seeing it from far away, you see, because if you allow yourself to get into it, 
It's as if you get contaminated by it and you get pulled into it and you become a victim just by seeing it, hearing about it, knowing about it. But from a spiritual angle, it would be said, no, you, you have to hold on to your humanity. You have to hold on to your empathy, your sympathy, but without getting pulled in. So you have to be able to uh, see it as a detached observer. So uh, this takes a lot of strength because you have to feel for the people, not be just ice cold and just cut off your feelings. That is not spiritually powerful or wise or in any way good. But you need to be able to feel and at the same time, part of what we are taught to do is to actually transfer the spiritual light that we accumulate in meditation, to actually transfer that to the people who are undergoing these terrible scenes in the drama so that they experience relief and, and an ability to get through that. So this is you can say spiritual service, and, mm. and so we uh, do spend quite a lot of time orienting our mind, strengthening the mind to be able to uh, communicate and convey that current of energy that, that gives relief. Okay. So, Sister Denise, how do you include God in this practice? And, you know, whenever something shocking happens in the world, invariably somebody will ask the question, why is God not doing anything to stop this? Okay. Um, a poor God gets blamed for it in the first place. And secondly, gets attacked for um, some believe that he is the one who caused it. Others believe that he should have intervened and stopped this. And then there's a reaction to him for doing neither. Okay. So wh what is your take? How does God fit into the drama that's unfolding here on earth? Well, God knows the future. And God knows a whole lot more about the present than we know about. Because what you see on the news is just a teeny tiny tip of the iceberg, which is considered by the news medium as um, palatable to the people. But there's masses of things that are withheld from public knowledge, withheld from public view. And there are even things that are not known by the news media. Uh, there, are, there are much, much worse things going on than we could even imagine. But all of this is uh, known to God. And God sees all of these people as his, her children and cannot bear that they are suffering. Uh, and so God, how does God operate? People don't really know because what you have in the different religions is very little information about God and that too is interpreted in many different ways according to the perspective of the interpreter. But God um, acts directly and also indirectly. And so there are people, people who want to develop themselves spiritually, they also want to be instruments of God or uh, conduits for God to use. And so this is also something that we learn about in Raj Yoga, that um, there are some things that God wishes to do through those human beings who are up for it. And so uh, God has very healing energy, very loving, very powerful energy that has to reach to those people who are suffering, you know, the slaughter of the innocents. And so we have to become conduits for that. And so we do that. And God also, um, you know, when a person turns their attention to God, then they can actually receive a huge amount of peace, of love, and an ability to get through that situation. So God is extremely active at this time because 
This is the time where civilization is changing. So civilization as we know it is coming to an end in this particular format and a new civilization is uh, getting constructed for which God is very much the author of such new civilization where, you know, it is um, a world of humanity being humane, being based in, in love and beauty and care and all of the ways you know, that everybody knows the world should be, you know, which of course God is famous for creating a paradise world, a perfect world, a harmonious world. But that world of harmony arises out of the ashes of a world of absolute distress and violence. And so God calls this the confluence where the world as we know it can no longer subsist, can no longer sustain itself. So that subsides and then this new one emerges. And of course it's invisible, it's underground, but it's coming through. And so this is part of the teachings that we study is that uh, if you position yourself in the consciousness of what we call the confluence age where these two civilizations are converging and that with love for God and and really trying to know God as he she truly is and and being connected with God you become part of the new creation you know and and there are those who are very antagonistic to god very antagonistic to fellow human beings who are part of the destructive process and so there is a destructive process and a constructive process going on at the same time and sometimes it's compared to you know winter where the leaves rot and they become the new soil in which the new seeds grow again. And so I think God's um, message to humanity at this time is, do not be afraid. Trust in me, be with me, and I will carry you through this. You see, And one has to go through it. Uh, but I think that there's a huge difference between going through it antagonistic to God and going through it with God in the hands of God, you see. So there the question of love for God, faith in God, love for humanity, love for the world uh, plays a very important part. Hmm. Okay. Mr. Denise, um, one um, nasty thing that happens to people when um, um, living in a world that has become so adversarial is that one is left with a feeling of fear um, and it's so many um, different types of fear. How do you deal with that aspect of, of it alone where you're, um, it's not the state that you want to be but um, you're so horrified by what happens around you that you, there's from a feeling of vulnerability it becomes fear. Well it, it becomes, people become a paralyzed with fear, petrified. Mm. And this is where making yourself be with God changes things, you see. Because if you really connect yourself to God, there is this these phrases, you know, fear not, I am with you. Mm. you know? And really know that God is with you. Um, then th it changes the fear factor and it changes into a courage factor. You know, when a child has the hand of the parent in a dangerous situation, the child doesn't feel fear because the parent is there. Mm. Similarly, a soul linked with God can get through anything because of that link. Mm. And so it's really a question of God saying, just link with me, I'll get you through this, don't worry. Okay. Sister Denise, could you tell us more about how you do the linking, given the fact that you mentioned in a previous episode, God does not 
uh, have one of these? <laughs> a body. Yes. Well, it's, so how, it's how? the mind. You okay. know, it's possible for a person to recognize the self as a, a spirit, as a being of light who's using a physical body and who persists beyond the duration of the physical body. Because the, the nature of a soul, a being of light, an intelligent being who is discarnate and who uses a body or leaves a body, you know, God is the same. A discarnate intelligence, but not a human soul. This is the supreme soul, the father of all the souls, the one who um, carries all the souls uh, back with himself to something we call the home of souls. You know, sometimes people just want to go home. <laughs> or, yes. Stop the world, I want to get off, yes. something like this. And, and it's a sort of reminiscent of this ancient memory that a time comes when all the souls return back to the world of light with God and then the whole planet is completely reset and then we return to the planet for another uh, experience of life in a new civilization. So we're at a, at a point of intense transition mm -hmm. and for that we really need to be close to God because if you are away from God you do not have any support. If you're with God and how do you become with God? In your mind. You just say, God, I'm your child, I'm with you, um, be with me, or I know you're with me. It's a kind of affirmation. And just allow yourself to become conscious of the self as a soul. And then you immediately come to that dimension where you are on the same level with God. And then um, with the power of stillness, with the power of the mind, uh, you are... Um, on another level from the level of um, the world of matter which is going through absolute change. Mm. That's what you have to do. Okay. So, Sister Denise, um, the measures that one employs to keep oneself safe um, in this, you may have covered it in the content already, but I'd like you to answer the question in this context. Um, you mentioned getting in touch with one's own spirituality and how to handle the the, the backlash of negative feelings and thoughts. Then you spoke of one's relationship with God. But my final question to you on the subject is, um, what steps do you take as an individual to protect yourself mentally, to protect yourself by way of your feelings, as well as physically from the, um, uh, in many cases, it's the bombs that are dropping. Okay. In other places, it's um, it's diseases for which humanity is yet to find a cure. In uh, third place, it's um, um, you know instability in country. Um, in other countries, it's uh, a financial crisis. So there's there's all of these factors. But how does one um, protect oneself and maintain your dignity within the protection? Not starve. Not get attacked not get hurt, because being safe and secure is, I think, one of the most ele elemental needs a human being has. So wh where is your safety, and how do you get to a point where you feel you feel safe, not just you think, uh, oh, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. You feel it, you experience it, and irrespective of what's going on around you, you're, uh, you're in your zone, as it were. I think we have to stop worrying about our security um, because that puts out a vibration where you're not safe. Uh, you have to affirm your state, your state of spirituality where you are really literally not on the same level as that which is going on. We have actually a number of examples of people who have been uh, practicing meditation, practicing Raj Yoga, who have been in all sorts of extremely dangerous and um, 
you know, natural calamities or war or something like this, you know, and they just place themselves in the hands of God and affirm that, yes, I am with God. And what happens in the case of a kidnapper, uh, the kidnapper says, I don't understand why you're so peaceful. You better go. Or um, the person who has um, armed robbery happening, um, the armed robber doesn't even see that person because they're in a different vibration. And the person has to just be still and be with God and the incident passes. In the case of earthquake, hurricane, this kind of thing, uh, it's as if your feet carry you to the safe place. And, um, you know, all of the damage, buildings falling down, mountains falling down, water coming, it goes around you, but you are safe. And it's to do with faith, it's to do with stillness, it's to do with just positioning yourself with God. And even if you have to leave your body, which will happen sooner or later anyway, leave your body by placing yourself in the hands of God, you know, nothing will happen to you, as it were. We even have examples of that where, you know, a person um, goes peacefully. And of course, we subscribe very much to reincarnation. It is possible to even follow a person after they have left their body and see, you know, where have they gone, what has happened to them, and in all cases, it's okay, I'm all right, I'm with God, don't worry about me, you know. And this is something new for most people because we're so identified with the physical body. And spiritual practice, spiritual study gets us to identify more and more with the self as an eternal immortal spirit, a being of light. And then all of this which is going on in the material world, you know, it's really quite ephemeral. It's all the time changing. But you yourself, you know, you're moving through it and, um, and it's all right. You are forever. The earth is forever. People are so worried what's going to happen to the earth. Well, the earth can regenerate itself. Mm. You try having an argument with a hurricane. Mm, doesn't work. You know, no. okay, cool. the earth is powerful. Mm. You know, in some religions, they consider the earth as a deity. Why? Because of its incredible power. You know, the human spirit is connected with the planet earth. I mean, people are looking for another planet to go live on when this one's been, you know, totally wrecked by human greed that there isn't any other planet that is like this one. You know, this is it. And the fact that we have wrecked it doesn't prevent it from resetting itself. Uh, but our karma with God, our karma with each other, our karma with the earth will lead to some consequences, you know. And there is a saying in India, which is very interesting, that at the time of catastrophe, those who have hatred for God experience destruction. And at the time of catastrophe, those who are having love for God experience victory, you know. And, and this, in many cases, is the circumstance that we're in. So we really need to see, do I recognize God? Do I love God? Do I understand the huge role that God plays, especially at this time, and do I align myself with God, or do I just deny all of that? Mm. That's a question. Okay. Okay. Sister Denise, thank you so much. This was extremely insightful. Um, as always, you've given us food for thought, and uh, I think what I took mainly from today's talk is that uh, one's protection doesn't involve building bigger walls or 
barricading one's home, but it's actually protection of the spirit rather than protection of the body. Uh, and that is through one's relationship with God. So that is indeed a very powerful and all-consuming message. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I um, found today's topic very sobering, um, and it is on your shoulders to ask yourself whether you can resonate with anything Sister Denise has shared, whether any of it makes sense to you. Um, what stays with me is the fact that protection is at hand, help is at hand. You're not alone. There is a higher power who's uh, willing to lend you his hand of protection, but there's also responsibility on you to extend your hand and place it in God's hand. I think that is the most beautiful message that Sister Denise has shared today, and uh, she will be back on another occasion on other topics in the same series so we hope that you stay tuned and i also hope that uh, you can take something from today's talk and make it your own thank you so much for joining us good day to you Thank you.